Hello friends, my name is Sanjay Lakhanpal and in today's lecture we are going to learn how to load data in a real time basis or a near real time basis in a snowflake. So let's start with our presentation first then we'll look into a hands on app where we are going to create a snow pipe pipelines in a snowflake. In today's lecture we will cover the following topics for a snow pipeline. So first thing, the overview. So why we need to load data in a real time basis or in a near real time basis into any data lake or a data warehouse. So first thing, we load data using a two methods. One is a batch processing, another is a real time processing. In a batch processing, we run a set of jobs in a batch which will load the data from the source system to the target tables in a data lake or a data warehouse. What the problem with this approach is that we have a scheduled batch which runs either on a daily basis or a weekly basis or on a monthly basis. So the data is loaded only once in a day or a week or in a month and the data the business users which want to see a present picture of their business is not possible in such uh, batch processing. So what happened? So business required, they want to see the data on a real time basis. So real time, it's like when the event occurred. Okay. So at that occurrence of an event itself, the data get populated into a data warehouse or in a sub near real time basis. Okay. So the issue with we have a batch processing that data is a stale data and it's less actionable because if we are running a jobs on a monthly basis, then after 15 days, the data is 15 days old and it will lead to a costly business errors. Snowpipe is a continuous data ingestion service provided by a snowflake, which will load the data in a real time or a in a near real time basis in a snowflake. Data is loaded in a micro batches. It means well, out of a complete chunk of uh, complete data, only the small chunk of data is loaded into a table in a, using a pipeline in a per micro batch basis. So it's like uh, uh, I'm producing a data. So I have given a condition of a one MB so, uh, for a file. Uh, the size of a file or a 60 seconds as a time period, snow pipe will start loading the data as soon as the size of a file is 1 MB or the duration is 60 seconds from the last execution of the snow pipe. There are two data ingestion methods in a snowflake in a snow pipe. One is using a cloud event notification so it's like we load a data into some cloud storage from there some notification is uh, uh, executed okay that will send to a snow pipe and the snow pipe will load data from the cloud storage into a snowflake another is using a snow pipe rest api so here we'll create a some custom program that will run at a specific interval of time and load the data from the location from the source location into a snowflake tables. So in order uh, to load the data using a first approach that is a cloud uh, storage base, we need to create a cloud storage. Okay. And we need to create a permissions over there. So let's say we have a AWS S3. So we need a, some S3 bucket over there on a AWS. And also we need a IAM policy defined so that snowflake uh, stage can access the AWS S3 that we are going to learn in a hands on lab in a few minutes. So let's go to a hands on lab and create a snow pipeline which will load the data from a source system. In our case, we have a JSON files and uh, we will see how the uh, JSON files are loaded directly in a real time or a near real time basis into a snowflake table. So I have already written a st 
statements here for creating a database and other uh, snow pipelines as well as stages required things in our example. Although I already have a snow pipe database created, but I will uh, execute this statement again. What this statement will do, it will create a database with a name snow pipe if it does not exist. And if it exists, then it will replace the database with the empty new database. So let's execute this statement. Okay. So second thing that we are going to create do is create a table. Okay. So I will show you example of a JSON files that we are going to load today. So this is a sample JSON file that I have. So if you see, I have a JSON file <laughs> which contains first name, last name, gender, age, address, and a phone number. So we are going to load these JSON files into our Snowflake table. So the next thing that we are going to do is create a table in a snowflake in our database snow pipe. So I have given a name as a JSON text to an attribute and the data type is a variant. So let me create this table. Next thing what we are going to do is to create a stage that will uh, point to a S3 bucket and uh, uh, this stage we are going to use for loading our data into our table. So this is a statement here that we can use to create a stage, create or replace stage and then give the name of a stage and the URL of the S3 bucket as well as the credentials. So it's, uh, it's going to be AWS key ID and AWS secret key. So let me show you. So this is a S3 bucket that I have and uh, right now if you see we don't have anything here okay so let's create this stage so you can see here the stage is created successfully we can see the stages like how many stages are there okay so we can see that this is the stage snow stage that we have created and it's in a database snow pipe. We can also use uh, see the content of this state by using a statement list at the rate And we can see right now there is nothing in our S3 bucket. The next thing is to create a snow pipe in a snowflake account in or in our database. So the statement of creating a snow pipe is this. So here we have a create or replace pipe and then we can uh, we have to give the name of the snow pipe that we want to create. Okay. Here I have given an auto and just equal to true. That means as the event occur, the snow pipe will start executing and it will load the data into a table. Next is a copy into a snowflake table, the table that we created above from the stage. Okay. And then the last we have given a format, the type of file that we want to load into a snow table. So let's create this snow pipe. Okay. So now we can see, do we have any data in this table? No. So right now it's zero. And let's see our pipe now. Okay. So in order to create a notification, so what we have to do, we have to copy this ARN 
from here and then move to a AWS S3. In our S3 bucket, we have to move to a snow pro uh, this properties tab and uh, scroll down to the bottom. And in this event, we have to create a event notification. So we can give a name, any name. So let's let uh, uh, let me give a test as a name. Okay. Then event type is a S3. So I'll click here. All S3 create event uh, events. And then SQSQ click here and enter that SQSQ the ARN that we have copied from there. Okay, so I'll show you this thing because I already have created a SQS queue. Okay, so add it. Okay, so I have given an event name as a snow pipe and I have selected all the uh, create events for S3 and at the last I have given SQS as a queue and this is the ARN that I have got from here. Okay, so let's cancel. Now let's load a data into a S3 bucket. I mean, we can see here that we don't have any data in a S3 bucket right now. So I'm using a AWS CLI for loading a data <coughs> into a S3 bucket. So let's first load. This uh, snowpipe.json file. So this file got uh, loaded successfully into a S3 bucket. We can see this thing from here. So snowpipe11.json is there. Now let's load another file. Two. So let's again see whether we have two files or not. So we can see here that these two pi, uh, files are there in a S3 bucket. Now let's go to a Snowflake UI and see whether the data that we have loaded into a S3 bucket is there or not. So in order to uh, look for a data, so let's execute these statements. Select star from table because in the snow pipe that we have created is on this table and uh, from this state the data is getting loaded into this table. So we can see here that uh, two records are loaded into our two uh, records are there in a table. Let's look into the records. So we can see here that I have two records and both are same because uh, my uh, JSON files they contain the same set of data in both the files. So the other things, uh, how to manage the snow pipelines. Okay. So these are the statements which we can use. So let's say if we want to pose a snow pipeline. So what we have, to, we can do, we can alter the pipeline and uh, execute this statement. So now my snow pipe is posed. If we want to drop a pipe, we can use a drop pipe and the, give the name of a snow pipe that we want to drop. And we have seen that uh, if we want to see the pipes, we can do a snow pipes. So that's what uh, we have in our, uh, today's lab. So here is the conclusion, what we have covered. Snow pipe is a continuous data loading versus I mean, how uh, the two different methods, how we can load the data into a snow, uh, snowflake using a snow pipe. Then we have seen how uh, we can create an events notification for a snow pipe and creating a snow pipe, managing and deleting the snow pipes in a snowflake. So thank you friends. If you like my video, please do subscribe to my channel 
and visit my website www.sanjaylakhanpal.com. Thank you.